job with it.
And interestingly enough, I I graduated undergraduate school. I graduated in Europe a couple days before the before the uh, Get my garments. There we are. There we go. Is that all the way up? No? That's all the way up? It's up. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you gotta get one of these. Put this thing on your shirt. Oh, oh okay. And then that whole thing. Is that okay? Wait a minute, let me turn you just a little more. All right. There you go. They're not, not one of the, uh, don't belong to the lodge. Oh, it's not, it's not, the, it's not the Irish Arch. <laughs> That's right. Okay. 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 You should take my shirt off, too. Oh, yeah. Sure I did. <laughs> You'll want to. Yes, sir. At the time. Yes. yes. That's when they are. Good. I don't have to carry all that. <laughs> yeah. No practicing all that. I think in your hat. <laughs> yes, I left it over. Hi, uh, Billy Milner. Billy Milner. Yeah, nice to see you. How are you? Happy day. How are you? Uh, very warm one. It's <laughs> very good for, the, for our college. Greenfield. See, these folks start right at the bottom. They put the zipper in no, first. They, no, they don't start They've been here there. before, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch the probes. Yeah. The learning curve is <laughs> very sharp. <laughs> oh, I see. Especially he has to. Uh, Enjoying keeps us straight. Right? We're lucky if we get him back in the right place. <laughs> If you change weight yeah, a little, you're sort of headed. Well, I think there's plenty of room in these, you know. <laughs>
necessary for summer to come with such a vengeance on this day, but I've been told it's 96 degrees, so my advice is think cool. <laughs> like to make sure that we give special recognition to those individuals who are here in the Sunday Frank and family. I assure you that I know that my speech is not the main thing they tell you and then they tell you what they told you. Uh -oh. I'll talk about five subjects today and coincidentally they each have a decision. You know you Commencement, change, challenges, character, and finally, commitment. I'm going to warn you ahead of time, I'm going to mix them up so you can't count where I'm at by checking them out. <laughs> A time of high hopes and great expectations in which so much lies in the future. But commencement is also, most importantly, a time of challenges, enormous challenges. And the greatest of these challenges to you today is change. Change, it sounds simple enough, but change and its impact on you in what many call the real world is going to be a much more formidable obstacle than most of you realize. I know that in the advanced age, change is probably the biggest challenge you're going to have to face. I assure you that it is a fact of life and that it is going to affect every facet of your lives. And it's a continuing phenomenon. In other words, welcome it. It has been said that the future belongs to those. As a society, we've been moving steadily from primarily an industrial production-based economy to being instead service and information-based. It's estimated, for example, that in our country today, approximately 60% of the national gross product is generated by service-based functions. And at the very center of that service-based economy is the information explosion. To give you just the difference in price of those components, where if a similar learning curve had been established to something like a Rolls-Royce, that Rolls-Royce today would sell for less than $1,000. And computers have also become much more powerful. The model that controlled the first manned space effort was less powerful than the apples or Ataris that you can purchase off the shelf today. An industry is showing a much most difficult task has been to get a It used to be that when a student finished his formal education, or when a young apprentice received his journeyman's award, he thought that there was little or nothing left to be learned. The graduate used basically the same knowledge that had been used by his predecessors, and the craftsman performed his trade virtually the same way as it had been for generations. This gift is being made in the memory of the late F. Hunter Creech, one of the same things as they are, unpleasant or not, is the first step in leading to change them in keeping with your mission. If as a consequence of your acts, success is not achieved, you and a good leader do not shirk responsibility. You see and you describe your failure in plain language. Seeing things as they are, a leader knows his capability as well as his responsibility. We should encourage the habit of doing what we think we ought to do without conscious reference to what others think we should do. I do not mean to be professionally pig-headed. That is ignoring vice, advice or construction, constructive instruction or criticism about how a certain job should be done. I mean the habit of taking final counsel with oneself and being comfortable in the judgments prompted by that counsel. And being willing 
where moral matters are concerned, to risk all and to not compromise. I come now to my final charge to you, commitment. The assumption of personal responsibility for your alma mater, your community, your nation, and yes, even the world. In the 1830s, 150 plus years ago, long before the prior education to an even broader community, the future of this nation and its impact on world affairs and international security will depend on the American. I will now administer the oath of office. I will read it facing you. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. All the states. In the grade of second, grade of second lieutenant, do solemnly swear, do solemnly do solemnly swear, swear that I will swear freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. Without. It's only fitting that the school that has done so much to prepare these incidents that concern the very valued spot that you hold in this community uh, having been a professional people and has meant a tremendous has done a tremendous good in this community also hunter creech whose name has been mentioned this afternoon uh, one of his last wishes with us at a meeting before his untimely death was in discussion of his great hope that you would pass this on to you as well as to read the resolution which will confer upon you the, de, uh, the honorary degree. Whereas Mr. Edward J. Campbell, Chief Executive Officer of the Newport News Shipbuilding since January 1979, has demonstrated the genius of leadership in business and a dedication to the service of society and education. And whereas his business acumen has manifest itself in the extraordinary growth of Newport News shipbuilding since 1979, an increase in sales from 730 million to 1.627 billion, a growth in workforce from 23,000 to 29,000, 29,000, and a backlog in contracts of 7.5 billion, and whereas his belief in service and education has assumed both a corporate and a personal form, the result of which is a Hampton Roads enriched culturally and educationally, and the nation's education enhanced through his work on the boards of Hampton Sydney College, the Webb Institute of Nar Naval Architecture, and the Southeastern University's Research Association. Be it therefore resolved that the Board of Visitors of Christopher Newport College does hereby bestow on Mr. Edward J. Campbell the Doctor of Laws degree honoris causa and sets the commencement exercises of May 20th, 1984 as the occasion for his investiture.
We're gonna put this hood on you. Thank you, one and all. It's a great honor, and I deeply appreciate it. Can you read lips? Oh, no, do it again. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> Boy, you've been in front of TVs all day long. Oh, it's been a long day. Well, we go this way. Still doing it now? That's the time, Tom Olds. <laughs> 